Hey everyone, today we're going to start a video series on proportions. This goes with our ratio unit as well because proportions are a type of ratio. So you're welcome to watch those videos first, but if you're ready for proportions, we're going to start with um, what is a proportional and what is a non-proportional relationship today. All right, with a proportional relationship, you have a relationship that changes. It will either increase or decrease at the same rate. So if something's going to go up at the same speed, it'll go down at the same speed, um, depending on what two uh, things you're comparing. So if I'm talking about hourly wages, I'm talking about time with money. So maybe it's a $15 per hour. Okay, so that's a proportional rate. That way I know if I worked 10 hours, so if I work 10 hours, that means I'm making $150 because they increase at the same speed. So we have your age in months to years, just with years. Um, so on like the day of your birth. So like a two year old, so if it's year two, that means you're 24 months, okay? Or maybe you're uh, 10. So then you'd be 120 months, right? Just counting on your birthday, not after your birthday's over with extra months. And then price per gallon of gas. So um, the other day I was driving, it was $2.99 per gallon. So I know that if I spent, or if I wanted to get 10 gallons, excuse me, I would spend $29.99, okay? So I'm spending $29.99 on gas right there. So when you have a non-proportional relationship, that means a ratio or the rate of change is not the same. So things might increase at different speeds. One might increase and the other might stay the same. So examples would be height and weight, like your height and your weight, they don't correlate. So just because maybe you're five foot three, that doesn't mean you're gonna weigh this amount because it's not a proportional relationship. Um, think of when uh, babies are born, they're all different weights and they're all different lengths. So they don't go together all the time with one specific height matching to a certain weight. Um, same thing for a unit rate per different size of item at the grocery store. Um, or the grocery store is a good example of it. We have an example of this with the cereal boxes in our unit rates video. Um, if you get the smaller box versus the bigger box, it actually costs different per unit um, than if you were just to get the same thing for if you got one or two or three items. So different per size of item. Uh, cost of a car to the size. So you might get a really big car that's not as expensive as maybe a really small sports car or maybe a fancy Italian car. I don't know cars that well. So, but if you get a different, um, maybe a smaller car might cost a lot of money depending on what it is or it might get a nice big vehicle that doesn't cost as much or vice versa. So cost doesn't correlate to size. It's not a proportional relationship. They don't increase at the same amount because there's lots of other factors that would go into these things. So those are your non-proportional relationships. So again, proportional, they increase or decrease at the same rate, okay? Um, if you've studied slope and things like that, that would be your slope in that situation. If you haven't, don't worry, we've got videos on that coming. Um, now, if they do increase or decrease at a constant rate, the same rate, we call this the constant of proportionality. So it shows it is proportional, they increase and decrease at the same rate. So this is if it is proportional, the rate will increase or decrease, um, the rate that it is called the constant of proportionality, excuse me. So this is your constant ratio, okay? So ratios, again, between your two quantities. So we're gonna practice. We wanna find the constant of proportionality. Something here, when you're writing that constant, it's gonna be a fraction. It's always gonna be the y value over the x value. So we wanna look for the change in that value. Sometimes you might see a little triangle to indicate that there's a change. That's actually the Greek letter delta. And that's showing change, especially if you have studied things like slope in the, in the past, then you're gonna see that triangle. It's okay if you haven't, no big deal. So I'm gonna look to see how these value change, change um, with each other, excuse me. So between two and four, 
that has increased to, so I'm going to have a plus 2. Between 2, I'm sorry, 4 and 6, that's gone up plus 2. And between 6 and 8, that's also gone up plus 2. Okay, so my y or my x value is changing at a constant plus 2 rate. That's good. It needs to be the same. If it's not the same, I'd have to do a little bit more investigating. So here, 3 to 6, up 3. 6 to 9, I've gone up 3. 9 to 12, I've gone up 3. Okay, I put the plus sign, so that way I know that I'm increasing 3 and not decreasing. If I was decreasing, I'd put a minus 3 or like a negative 3. So to make my constant of proportionality, remember the y value is going to go over the x, my y value is changing consistently by 3 units, whatever we're talking about here. So this is going to be a positive 3. Because it's positive, I'm not going to write the plus sign. If it was negative, put the negative sign if it's a minus. And then for the x value, I'm going up by 2. I'm going to put the 2 on the bottom. And the y on top, x on bottom. Okay. So my constant of proportionality is 3 over 2. Okay. And you can leave it like that. You can change it to 1.5. I wouldn't use a mixed number here because that will get confusing in the future, um, especially when you do get to slope. It's all connected. So 3 over 2 is your constant. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it the COP, the COP, constant of proportionality. Okay, we're going to do a few more practices on this. So we want to determine if a relationship, if these two relationships are proportional or non-proportional. So let's talk about zero, zero though. When you have a proportional relationship, that means when one value is zero, the other value needs to be zero. So if I go back to the, um, this slide here, if I work zero hours, that means I've made zero dollars, right? For my age, if I've worked, or I've worked, I'm sorry, if I am zero years old, then I'm zero months old. Remember, that's just on your birthday itself. Um, and price per gallon, if, um, if you get zero gallons of gas, that's going to cost you zero dollars because you haven't bought anything, okay? So they need to be zero, zero. Now sometimes um, your non-proportional relationships, it could be zero, zero depending on what makes sense. Um, but we'll do some examples of when it's non-proportional and it doesn't match up with that zero, zero amount. Um, so if you have a gallon of gas, like we already talked about this, um, 239 per gallon, is that a proportional relationship? It is, because this is your constant of proportionality. That's how much it's increasing for every gallon you get. You're paying 239 more. And if you paid zero dollars, you'd be getting zero gallons. So, assuming there's no special circumstances on that. So this one is, yes, it's a proportional relationship. Now, you might see it on a table, so you've got time to distance. Um, my time, those are all increasing by one, so I'm going to check these. So they've all increased by one, so those are the same number. And then for my distance, let's see, we're going up plus three, plus three, plus three, plus three. So these are all going up by one as well. Remember y over x, and this usually tables look like this, x, y. I've got a three over one, which is three for my constant of proportionality, okay? And if I went backwards, so if I went from one and I went backwards one, I'm at zero. Then if I was at three and I went backwards the three, I would be at zero, zero. So yes, this is a constant. I'm sorry, this is proportional. And therefore, the number they give me this three is my constant of proportionality. Okay. Again, you might have a number that looks like your constant of proportionality, but if it doesn't match up with zero and zero, then it is not proportional. So we'd actually use a different term for that number. All right, go ahead and pause the video here and try to find if these tables are proportional or non-proportional. And if they are proportional, try to find the constant of proportionality. All right, go ahead and pause. I'll go ahead and start. Your time here, one, two, three, four, so those all go up by one. You're welcome to do the individual changes, but I can quickly see they all go up by one. 12 to 20 goes up by eight. 20 to 31 goes up by 11, okay, I already have a problem here, okay, because all of these on the right side, or on the left side, these all go up by ones, and right here, I already have a different value, I've got plus 8, plus 11, red flag, total red flag, 
we do not have a proportional relationship. Um, this shows some relationship, but not one that's proportional. So this would be non, I would say non-prop. Okay. It, it is a non-proportional relationship because they don't increase at the same rate. Okay, because if I went from 12, I wouldn't know, do I go down by eight, do I go by 11? I don't know, I don't have enough information to see what kind of relationship that is. That's okay. All right, and then I have my time and my distance on my second table. Again, one, two, three, four, those all go up by one. So far, so good. I go four to eight plus four, eight to 12 plus four, and then 12 to 16 is plus four. Okay, so that's good. So this one would be proportional. Now it's proportional based on the information that they've given me. So this is what they've given. Based on what I see, it is proportional. Okay, so if you're like, well, what if there's more info? Well, I don't have that info. So based on what I have, it is proportional, okay? So it would be proportional. How many times can I say the word proportional? Count. <laughs> That's gonna be four over one, which is four. Okay, and that it would be your constant of proportionality. Oops, that's just the OP. Okay, all right. So those from tables. And then we have a word problem. I believe this is our last um, problem for this video. So we have the cost of, might want a calculator by the way, sorry. So go get one if you need it or use your phone calculator. The cost for 2.5 pounds of fruit is 520. Find the constant of proportionality. Okay, so I'm finding the constant of proportionality. Because it tells me to find it, I already know, okay, by default, it's, it has to be proportional because of the language in the problem. Then write an equation, interesting, relating cost to pounds. How much will four pounds cost and how much will seven pounds cost? Okay, so what I need to find is, if you wanna pause it and go ahead and try it yourself, by all means, please go for it. I'm gonna go ahead and explain it. I'm going to find first how much one pound of fruit costs. That's going to be my constant of proportionality. That means for every pound of fruit I buy, it's going to cost me this amount. So I'm looking for cost per, oh, sorry, per pound. There we go. So I'm looking for cost per pound. So that's going to be 520 divided, there's my per, by 2.5, because I'm paying $5.20 for 2.5 pounds of fruit. So 5.2 divided by 2.5, I get 208. 208, so that's per one pound. So for one pound, that's gonna be my amount. So think about this, when you're writing an equation, um, if you've written an equation before, then you're familiar with assigning the variables. I'm gonna use the variables X and Y. So X and Y, <clears throat> excuse me. And remember over here, this was, y, um, sorry, Y's on top. Whoops, I made the pin mad. Stop it. Okay, <laughs> all right. We got Y on top and X on bottom, sorry about that. So for Y, this is gonna be my cost and X is gonna be the pounds. So I'm gonna say for every pound that I buy, I'm multiplying that by this cost because it's per pound. So Y equals the 2.08 times whatever pounds it is because that's how much I know. My money is gonna equal 2.8 times the amount in pounds okay all right there's more practice on the writing equations when we get into our unit on slope and word problems with that because um, that's a proportional um, not proportional but it's a rational relationship that we will look at so if you're not comfortable with that equation yet don't panic we'll get more practice on that as time goes forward but try to think about it for every pound of fruit you're buying you're going to multiply that by your 2.08 because that's how we have to figure this out. It might work to do the problem backwards, so find the four pounds first and then write your equation. Because if I do 2.08 times four, that's gonna equal something, I'm gonna use my calculator, um, that's gonna be 832. 
okay? So really, I've done my, there's my 2.08 times x for my pounds, and that equals y, my cost, right? That's y, my cost, okay? And this is just another way to write this equation. Same, it's the same thing, okay? I'm just repeating this so much because I want you to get comfortable with it. Then I'm going to same same thing, excuse me, for seven pounds. Seven pounds is going to equal, now if you want to write the equation, I'm going to use this one here. Y, again, it's the same equation. You use whichever one you want, excuse me, equals 2.08 times seven. I like to show you different formats because you're going to see all of these in the classroom. Whether you're an in-class student, if you're an online student, you're a teacher looking for different ways to teach. Here's a couple of options for you. So Y is going to be 14.53, so $14.53. So that's seven pounds of fruit. It's 14.56. So here's my two answers for that question. Oh, that was terrible. There we go. Circle drawing, oval drawing. <laughs> it's not my strong suit. All right, so that's how much your um, pounds of fruit will cost you for whatever it is. All right, so that is our video on proportional and non-proportional relationships. Stay tuned for a few more videos dealing with the worlds of proportions. Thanks guys, have a great day.